IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H., The Savings Bank, Fairfield Medical Center, The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, The Carriage Company, Fairfield DD, Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, Dagger Law, and North Body Shop. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Interface Video Productions High School Basketball Game of the Week. I'm Jared Stewart alongside Tim Shoemaker. Tonight, we're at Fairfield Union High School for a big, I guess you could call it, rematch. Uh, these two teams, uh, Fairfield Union and Tri-Valley, met twice last year, once in the regular season, once in the uh, tournament, deep in the tournament. Tri-Valley won during the regular season. Fairfield Union got them back late in the tournament run. This should be a really good basketball game tonight. It should be. Both those games last year were five points or less. We're looking at two outstanding programs two really good coaches and, and very good players on the floor tonight jared tri-valley comes in five and two overall five and oh in the muskingum valley league big school division fairfield union is six and three overall three and two in the mid-state league buckeye division and tim you got a chance to talk to both these coaches of course uh i gotta tell you this uh, the last time that i did a tri-valley game uh broadcast a tri-valley game i was working for whiz tv in zanesville and the man patrolling the sidelines for Tri-Valley was none other than Tim Shoemaker. <laughs> That's a few days ago. <laughs> but you had a chance to talk to both coaches. And you have a very good relationship, obviously, with, with both sets of coaches. But tell us what they had to say about this game tonight. Well, yeah, I think the biggest thing is when you're in this holiday time now, we just started the new year, and Happy New Year to everybody yeah, in our crew. But you've got to start to set some and see some improvements as you get ready to really dive into league play yeah. twice a week. Um, as Coach Schaefer said from Fairfield Union, we've kind of stubbed our toe here a little bit. They've had a couple, but he said, we've been practicing well, and we're getting better. And he, he kind of knows what they've got to do better. It's not so much making changes, or just, it's, it's just doing your things better. And Coach McLaughlin, the exact same thing. They came off a tough loss to Hilliard Bradley last week, and they're like, okay, they showed us some things we need to get better at. So both coaches feel like they're not where they want to be or need to be, but where they both know they can get places with this group. Fairfield Union has lost two in a row, three out of four. Tri-Valley off that loss, uh, like you mentioned, to Hilliard Bradley. Tonight's tip-off brought to you by North Body Shop, providing quality customer service, parts, and reliability since 1979. Owner Mark North will provide you with a free written warranty on each estimate. That's Mark North of North Body Shop. He'll treat you right. Tell us about personnel for both these teams, some big-time players on the court tonight. Well, there's two right in the center right now, and Terrell Darden and Caleb Schmelzer. These are, these are two high-powered, talented players. Yeah. Tip one uh, controlled by the Falcons. Max Stansberry gets it out now to Redding. Back to Stansberry. Looks like a man-to-man -man defense from the Scotties. Right side now it's Cohen Eichhorn. Back out top. Here's Schmelzer. He's averaging 20.1 points a game, which is really good. But I think for Coach Schaefer, he'd like to get some more guys uh, yes. in, that, in the scorebook consistently. You are correct. Yeah, see how patient they want to be? They, they want to keep the tempo. That doesn't mean being passive. That means being very selective. And Caleb Schmelzer's playing the four spot, Jared, this year. It means he's going to be out here on the perimeter more. Not that he doesn't go inside, but that gives him the ability to do that. Shot's no good. Rebounded by the Scotties, and a jump ball going to be called the tie-up. Keegan Arnett got in there and tied it up. Rebound by Eric Neal for the Scotties. Yeah, with Keegan inside, they've been able to get some touches, and he, he, he's good in the post. And that makes Caleb just, Schmelzer, just a little more free to do some other things. Here's Neal with the basketball for the Scotties. Now Max Lyle. Over to Crane. We'll dump it down to Neal. Neal being worked on by Keegan Arnett. Nice cut and pass. And a shot put up by Max Lyle. Yeah, that, that, was, a, that was a great post feed. And you, and you want to play off your post. And I know 
Coach Schaefer wants to do the same thing. You don't have to throw it in there and necessarily score, but you but you got to sink the defense. Scotties have three guys averaging double figures. Max Lyle, 13.4. Terrell Darden, 12.1. And uh, uh, Noah Nichols at 11.1. As you see, a shot missed by the Falcons, rebounded by Darden. Here's how they want to play. Here's Lyle. Thought about the three, but a closeout defense by Icorn to pick him up. Little turnaround jump shot, no good. Rebounded by Schmelzer. Two nothing early on here at Fairfield Union. In the regional semifinal down at Ohio University last year, that was after losing to Tri Valley earlier in the season. And that was 37 to 33. So you, Tri Valley would rather have the tempo a little high. Yeah. Three in the corner, no good. Ball tipped around and controlled by the Scotties. Devin Crane er, controlled it. Right side, here's Darden. Skip pass, wide open in the corner for three. In and out for Brady Kaufman. And it's out of bounds, it'll go to the Falcons. Those are good looks, good, good, good ball movement by the Scotties. Five twenty and counting here in the first quarter. Two nothing. Scotty's on top of the Falcons. And ball tipped out of bounds. Good hands by Brady Kaufman. Yeah, going to try and pressure Caleb Redding here a little bit and force him to use a little more energy bringing the ball up the floor. Stansberry gets it right side to Arnett. Nice give and go, yeah. and Arnett finishes it. That's a great cut. Caught the defender flat footed and just cut his face. Keegan averaging seven point eight points a game. Coach Schaefer likes to see that, getting him involved early. 2-2 the score. Long range three from the top of the key is in for Eric Neal. Neal averaging 7.1 a game. Yeah, just very relaxed and confident there, Jared. Ball stolen away momentarily, but tipped out of bounds by Brady Kaufman. It goes back to the Falcons. Well, well Brady gets this aggressive. In this, uh, well, his dad is the girls' basketball coach. Here was that. That tribe out. That's a score. great cut, yeah, and pass. Replays tonight brought to you by Dagger Law. That's a good one there. On the score by Keegan Arnett. Here's Stansberry going on the drive. And swinging around to Schmelzer at the top of the key. Right side now, it's Icorn. Uh, Tri Valley's just switching, and it's creating some issues. Good job there by Eric Neal, just couldn't come up with a handle on it, but he tipped it away. Uh, watch him switch the screen, great move. Good move by Schmelzer, but he couldn't get the shot to go. Got his own rebound, yeah. that puts it up and in. Yeah, it's a great effort. Good drive by Caleb, and a, and a really nice hustle play. 4-2 Falcons. I call him a stat stuffer, Jared. When we get done with the game tonight, he'll have points, rebounds, some assists, yep. the block shot. He does a lot of things really well. Here it well. is. Watch this on the Dagger Law replay. That's a really nice move. Well, the key to the move, did you see how far he covered ground on the reversal? He threw yeah. his leg and gained ground, so he got to the basket. And then got his own rebound and finished it. Yeah, stay with it. Here's Darden. Now Crane. In the corner, Max Lyle. Back out to Darden. 335 and counting in the first quarter. Skip it in the corner. Three put up for Crane. No good. Nice hustle rebound by Darden, but he stepped on the end line. Well, that's an area Coach McLaughlin talked about with Terrell is that he is so athletic and so talented. He wants him to be a little more aggressive on the boards on both ends. Yeah. Just more after the ball. He's got a natural instinct for the field of the game. Good look there at Coach Travis Schaefer. He's in his sixth season overall as a head coach, his third on the boys' side. He spent three years coaching the girls and uh, had some success as well. He, he's been outstanding. The, the program, what the, where they, when you come out and watch, Jared, there's a, there's a plan, there's a, there's a reason how they're playing, and, and they're just outstanding. You want to talk about being busy. He's a varsity <laughs> basketball coach and an assistant principal. Have no idea. <laughs> no idea how he gets that done. His wife sitting up near us and their children. 
That's what uh, it takes. It's a very supportive family system, and I know Coach Schaefer has that. His team comes away with the steal right here. It's Keegan Arnett pulling it out of there. They trail it 5-4. Shot put up no good. Back come the Scotties quickly the other way. Devin Crane and a block going to be called on the Falcons. Schmelzer is called for it. Again, transition. Tri-Valley wants to get out, create a faster pace, off the rebound. If they can force turnovers, Fairfield Union would rather keep it at half court, Jared. Hunter Clark checks into the game for the Falcons. Also coming in is Isaiah DeLong. As you watch the replay, that's a good call. Yeah. We have a solid crew tonight. We really do. Little spin move, shot no good. And foul going to be called on the Scotties. They'll get Keaton Hahn with it, who just checked into the game. You take those fouls, Jared. Redding brings it up for Fairfield Union. Yeah, Jared's going to be tired before this is over. And a whistle and a foul going to be called now on Daniel Huffman. Two team fouls on Tri-Valley. As Brady Kaufman comes back in for the Scotties. Of course, now with the new free throw rules, five fouls and a quarter, and you're shooting two. I'm not sure. I, I'd be anxious to see the numbers and how it's affected, the, how many free throws per game, some of that. Schmelzer oh. thought about the three. Gets it off now to Redding. Redding spins inside the paint. Back out now to Hunter Clark. Back to Schmelzer on the baseline. Good pump fake and scores it and he's fouled. Well, he got his base down low where he kept his strength because they were pushing on him a little bit and made a great step move. Gets a three point play attempt here. Fouls called on Brady Kaufman. That's his first. So Caleb Schmelzer, the six foot six senior, gonna get a chance to complete the three point play. Now with this lineup, see, he, he's definitely the post here. Uh, Clarky can play some in there and he's had a good, good, done a good job off the bench for Fairfield Union. The Schmelzer is still one of the better post players yeah. in the whole area, Jared. Even though he's playing a four spot now, he's really good around the basket. 7-5 Falcons lead. Cole Rowley checks into the ball game for the Falcons. And good defense there by DeLong. And then Rowley getting on the floor and taken away by Hunter Clark. Good defense all around by the Falcons hustling after the basketball. Schmelzer inside the paint, kicking back out to DeLong. DeLong hands it off and almost stolen away. Redding controls it. Boy, they're getting a lot of deflections, Jared. Yeah, now stolen away by the Scotties. Here comes Hahn with it. Nice pass. Three in the corner for Darden. Off the iron and in, wow. Used every part of the iron. <laughs> and just like that, the Scotties back up 8-7. They've got two threes in the game. Down to a minute to play here in this first quarter. 8-7 Scotties. Redding gets it to DeLong at the top. Now Schmelzer. Dump inside to DeLong. Works his way inside. Good move by Isaiah DeLong. Couldn't finish it. And rebounded by the Scotties. Here comes Darden with 40 seconds. Swing it left side. Three put up and in for Keaton Hahn. That's three threes on the night for the Scotties, all three by different players, and they lead at 11-7. Rowley, nice pass back to Hunter Clark. His shot no good. Rowley the rebound. His putback is swatted away, but it'll stay with the Falcons. Yeah, they had a couple point-blank opportunities. You know, and it's a simple game sometimes, Jared. Make shots. Yep. If you make shots, you look a lot better. Tim, you were talking about, uh, you and I were talking on the way over here, uh, you came out and watched Fairfield Union play Hamilton Township, and that was a game you said that Hamilton just could not miss. There was really nothing. I mean, obviously, you can always play better and all right. that. But I'm telling you, Hamilton just shot the lights out, Jared, and it solved all their deficiencies. Yeah. 72%, I believe, for the game that That's night. unbelievable. <laughs> Schmelzer back to Stansbury with four seconds. 
Ball tipped around, stolen away by Darden. At the buzzer, three-quarter court shot off the iron and no good, but the Scotties lead at 11-7 after one. And let's give a big thanks to Buckeye Lake Marina. If you're looking for a new boat, a great pre-owned watercraft, or a place to get parts for your boat, Buckeye Lake Marina has it all. More information can be found at BuckeyeLakeMarina.com. Tim, let's talk about uh, these two teams and where they are uh, currently. Six and three, the Falcons. Three and two in the Buckeye of the Mid-State League. The Scotties, five and two, and off to a great start in the MVL. Yeah. Talk to us about the similarities between the two leagues. Very similar. Uh, school size is very similar. Um, I think the competition in the divisions are very similar. Obviously, there will be some variance off and on since the MVL is now in a big school. Yeah. And of course, the uh, Falcons are in the Buckeye. It's all very similar, Jared. The competition, the coaches are good. Uh, I, I really admire uh, watching the teams. And on a given night, if you're not ready, you will yeah. get beat. I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that there's not more crossover games to, between Mid-State League Buckeye and Muskingum and Valley Big School. I mean, with, fairly yeah. close in proximity and, and size. It, it's kind of a funny thing because, in all honesty, Muskingum County and Fairfield County are not that far apart. Right, and, right. And it does make sense. But, but there never has been in the history a long relationship between those two counties. And, of course, Fairfield Union is kind of in that weird situation where they are yeah. a southeast district team, uh, probably the farthest north southeast district team. Schmelzer shot no good, loose on the floor. Tie-up will go to Tri-Valley. Now, I know Caleb's had some success out there this year, and that's why he's at the four a little bit. But I'm telling you, if I'm coaching against Caleb Schmelzer, that is what the shot I want him to have. Right, right. Not the ones around the basket. Yeah. He is he is very polished. 11-7 the score. Scotty's on top. And they threw it away. That's one that will make Coach McLaughlin not yeah. happy. Yeah, those are just unforced turnovers. Pass and catch, as we used to call it. Coach Todd McLaughlin, in his 16th season, took over for Tim Shoemaker. And he's then has been there ever since. And you said you guys had some battles when he coached at uh, West, West Muskingum, he, right? He's an outstanding basketball coach, great person, and has done a great job putting his stamp on the program. Yeah. Here's Schmelzer. Thought about that long three. Dumps it into Keegan Arnett. Arnett back his way in. Gets himself <laughs> too far underneath the bucket, then gets it off to Stansberry. His shot no good, rebounded by the Scotties. How many of those have they missed? A lot. Darden, nice little fake, little running jumper no good. Tipped around, controlled by the Falcons. Rally. See, they're pressing them off even the miss, Jared. Yep. DeLong gets it inside to Arnett. Back to DeLong, his shot blocked. Here come the Scotties. Max Lyle bringing it up, two on two. And finishing it is Eric Neal. Nice pass. Of course, Lyle's the quarterback on the football team, yeah. so he's used to giving it up a little bit. But I really like Eric Neal running the floor there. Neal's fifth point of the ball game. The average is 7.1 a game. Scotty's lead at 13-7 with 6.06 to play in the first half. Nice little give and go. Back out now to Rally. Swinging around quickly. Schmelzer from three, no good. And tipped out of bounds. It'll go back to Tri-Valley. Substitutions coming in for both sides. For Tri-Valley, it's Keaton Hahn coming back in. And for the Falcons, Icorn and Redding back in. It's the Fairfield Union team that went 24 and four last year, lost in the regional final to Bishop Reedy, and have a lot of main players back from that team last year. Here's a shot in the corner, a three put up and in by Max Lyle. But Tim, you and I were talking, even though they have a lot of their scorers back, what they lost is a lot of really good defenders and just as core guys that you want on your team. It, it, it's, it's a funny thing in, in team sport, Jared, as you well know, it's chemistry yeah. and having right people do the right things. And it's, it's hard. Yep. 
they have some younger players. I think they're going to be fine. So just a little frustration right now. There's a dagger law replay of that three by Max Lyle. He's a 39% three-point shooter. And, and I've always said this now. Somebody may prove me wrong someday, but I've never seen a lefty that can't shoot it. <laughs> I can name, name millions. We have a timeout on the floor. Timeout Steiner being brought to you by the Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. You can check out their website at carriagecompany.com. 16-7 the score right now. Honestly, there's been no inefficiency from the fact they just can't make baskets. Right. I mean, when you look at basketball offensively, you look at what they call offensive efficiency rating. That means how many points per possession. They've only scored seven points here in about 11 minutes. Yeah. And they've gotten good shots, Jared. You just have to be composed and, and strong enough to finish those. I believe it was 11-7 at the end of the That's first correct. quarter. Little run here. You know we're going to have those. Lyle brings it up for the Scotties. Gives it off to Hahn. Now a corner three for Darden. No good. Nice backside rebound. No good. And there's another rebound to put back for Keaton Hahn. He's got five on the night. <laughs> 1870, 11-point lead for the Scotties. Schmelzer gets it to Clark. Now to Redding. They Redding. Boy, they're playing some tight defense, aren't they? They, they, they had planned to come in. Coach uh, McLaughlin told me. Good step through. Caleb trying to say, everybody, okay, take it easy here. Yep. Honestly, I mean, it's four minutes to go in the second quarter. Just settle down a little bit. That was called on Eric Neal. That's his first. First free throw, no good. That's one thing that you talked about, Shu, that uh, really has plagued Fairfield Union is free throw shooting. Yeah, neither team has had a great start to the year from the line, but the one thing you do know is – that can easily improve with yeah. just repetition. Yep. And it's a mindset and a focus, but you just gotta maybe come in before school some days and shoot 100. Yep. And just, you know, there's there's from a good score and a good shooter, you missed two in a row. Yeah, here's the problem they have if you don't get back. Yeah, Tri Valley gonna get it out and yeah. get it going quickly. Skip pass over to Goins Chandler who checked into the ball game. Long shot, no good, rebounded by Schmelzer. Well, that one was out there. Yes, it was. Darn near Bremen, huh? <laughs> Redding, tight defense put on by Brady Kaufman. Redding just going to drive it <laughs> and then get, try to get it over to Hunter Clark, but it's stolen away. Just not a good pass there. They're just putting a lot of pressure on, on, on Caleb Redding to handle the ball, and it's that's not his comfort zone. Yeah. Quick ball movement by the Scotties. Here's Darden at the elbow. Nice spin move inside the paint. His shot's no good, but he's going to be fouled. I believe they're going to get Hunter Clark with it. Well, we saw Hunter at the end of the year in football as a quarterback, and he really has come along. Absolutely. Six foot four, junior is Hunter Clark. Free throw up and good for Terrell Darden. He's got four in the game. Eric Neal checks back in for the Scotties. 12-point lead for Tri-Valley. Make it 13. Lyle checks back in for Tri-Valley and coming in for Fairfield Union is Keegan Arnett. Falcons still looking for their first score of the second quarter. They've been shut out for four and a half minutes. Stansberry gets it over to Schmelzer. In the corner to Redding. And a whistle and a foul going to be called on Brady Kaufman. That'll be his second. I was saying earlier, his dad's the girls' basketball coach at Tribe Halley. And he was the head basketball boys' coach at Mount Vernon for several years. Okay. And talk about aggressive player. He, was, he played for... Um, uh, the Highland Hawks okay. in high school and was a very good baseball player also. Yeah. So he, Brady gets it, he gets it honest. 
and competitiveness. There you go. It's a great post up. Schmelzer yep. off the glass, no good, but he's going to go to the free throw line and shoot two shots. Yeah, he spread out, got his bar arm up and cleared a passing lane. That's just outstanding effort right there by Caleb. Foul's called on Eric Neal. That's his second. First free throw up and good. Notice he took no dribbles. Yes, he, he took a little bit more time there, a little more patient. Well, he, he's working hard here to really keep everybody in, in line. I, I like that out of a senior. Even if you're frustrated a little bit, you got to bring the younger group together. And he's doing that. Second free throw, no good. Rebounded by Eric Neal. 20 to 8 the score. Darden gets it down. To Daniel Huffman. Huffman picks up his dribble and is double teamed. Yeah, they're just trapping the pick and roll out high. Open three in the corner, no good for Max Lyle, but he hustled for his own rebound. Here's Darden now. Little running jumper up and in. That's why I told you the talent shows. When Terrell comes ready to play and, and is consistent, he's really a good player. He's got seven in the game, make it a 22 to eight lead for Tri-Valley. They, they got a mismatch in the post here. There you go. Schmelzer, strong to the hoop and yep. scores it. They figured it out. Good recognition. Caleb Schmelzer has eight of his team's 10 points, pulls him back to within 12 with 2.10 to play in the first half. Lob pass over to Max Lyle. He drives, kicks it back out. Quick ball moving around. Here's Darden. Dump inside. Corner three, no good for Eric Neal. And the ball goes off the Falcons, no. It's out of bounds to the Falcons. Isaiah DeLong checks back into the ball game for Fairfield Union. There's a Dagger Law replay. Did he not touch that ball? I, I, I thought Redding touched it. Maybe not. We're up here a good ways. <laughs> yes, Boy, the, the deflections defensively have just really broken down some of the Falcons offense. Yeah, they're getting their hands in the passing lanes really well. Yeah, just you know, make a tip, Jared. Nothing's ever on time then. Darden shot no good, rebounded by Arnett. Just over a minute to play here in the second quarter. 22 to 10, Tri-Valley on top. Yeah, if you're, here they switch. See them switch the ball screen. Let Caleb go to work in the post. Turnaround jumper, no good. Got his own rebound. And couldn't get that one to go. Got his, no, check that. That's Hunter Clark with the rebound. His shot, no good. Now back to Schmelzer. And we've got somebody down for Tri-Valley. Here's Stansberry scoring it. And he's fouled. Max Stansberry is one that Coach Schaefer said is really starting to play well for his team. Yeah, he stepped up. And, and again, as we look at players who come up from JV level to play in a program that's been successful with good players, it takes a little time. Now, we're after Christmas, and I used to say, it's about time. Right. You know, and I think that's what they're getting to. Stansberry will be at the free throw line. Got a chance to talk to his grandfather, Coach Saunders, who spent 27 years as the head football coach at Gallia Academy High School. And now uh, gets a chance to uh, watch his grandson play basketball here at Fairfield Union. Counting down near half a minute to play in the first half, 22 to 12. Tribe Alley on top. Darden will wind some time down here, get it left side to Chandler, Goins Chandler. Now here's Keaton Hahn with 21 seconds. Back to Darden. Schmelzer comes out to apply a little bit more defense, make him do something with 12 seconds. Darden going to go one-on-one -on -one with seven. Kicks it back out to Hahn. Now top of the key, three-pointer no good. 
at the buzzer. So at halftime, the Tri-Valley Scotties lead it 22 to 12. And for Coach Schaefer, they picked it up a little bit. They're, at one point, they were they only had seven points on the board, and they did a little bit better job at the end. Exactly where he wants the tempo to be. It's 22 to 12. People are walking out going, what the heck is yeah. going on? That's what you want them to think. Because now you come out, a little more energy, they're a little more relaxed, but they really did a good job of getting the tempo they want. I think both teams got good shots, Jared. Yep. The ball just wasn't shot well. We're going to take a timeout. We come back, we'll have some first half stats and analysis, followed by all the second half action. You're watching the high school basketball game of the week. Stay with us. Fairfield County has so many wonderful resources for those in addiction with mental health issues. Um, there's so many great court supports to promote accountability so that there's just a positive change across the board. There's so many great interactions within all the community agencies. The Adam H Board is wonderful at providing resources for the whole population to be able to make sure that all those barriers are met and that those needs are taken care of. I like working in Fairfield County because it provides me the opportunity to make positive change where I live. Fairfield County has a great network for veterans to help. It makes me proud that we know we take care of our veterans here. I'm kind of new to it. I've been here for about a year. Uh, but it's interesting because you get a little bit of everything. We're right here in smack in between the big city of Columbus and Appalachia. So you get to work with all kinds of people, get to do all kinds of things. Uh, but the, my favorite thing about Fairfield County is the people. They are passionate, they are fun, they are engaged and it's a great place to work. Community, connections, collaboration. The Fairfield County Way. Taylor with Habitat for Humanity of Southeast Ohio. Here at Habitat for Humanity, our mission is simple. We bring the community together to build strength, stability, and self-reliance through shelter. Achieving this mission is made possible with the support of generous local partners like the Buckeye Cares program. That means Buckeye will make a donation with every vehicle sold this month. From all of us at Habitat for Humanity, we say thank you Buckeye for once again offering your generous support. Fairfield Federal, when it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Where can I find advanced heart care? When you choose Fairfield Medical Center for your heart care, you'll find confidence in our expertise and peace of mind in our compassion. Your health is important, and our heart and vascular experts specialize in the latest technology and treatments to keep you feeling your best. Whatever you're searching for, you can find it at Fairfield Medical Center. Welcome back to Fairfield Union High School where your halftime score, Tri-Valley leads the Falcons of Fairfield Union 22 to 12. Let's take a look at some first half scoring. First of all, for the Fairfield Union Falcons, just three guys in the scoring column. Keegan Arnett has two points. Max Stansberry has two. And Caleb Schmelzer leads the way with eight points. Again, it's Arnett two, Stansberry two, Schmelzer with eight. One of the things that Coach Schaefer talked about is 
getting more guys involved with the offense and scoring. Right now, that not happening, but we got to see if that don't happen, uh, pick it up in the second half. For the Tri-Valley Scotties, they have four guys in the scoring column. Three of those guys are guys that we fully expected. Uh, they are their leading scorers. Max Lyle right now has five points. Eric Neal with five. Noah Nichols, or check that, Keaton Hahn has five. And Terrell Darden has seven points to lead the Scotties. Again, it's Lyle with five, Neal with five, Hahn with five, and Terrell Darden has seven points. So Hahn already matching his uh, Average at 5.6 points a game. They're getting some more guys involved, which is what Coach Schaefer and the Falcons want to do. Again, your halftime score, Tri-Valley leads Fairfield Union in this rematch from the regional semifinal from last year. Your score, 22 to 12. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back with all the second half action on the high school basketball game of the week. I'm Kara Whittington, and I would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, located at 1540 Hubbard Drive in Lancaster. We are a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio and Hawking Hills area since 2003. Graduations with a personal touch, weddings with a personal touch, corporate events with a personal touch. Please call us today for all your party rental needs, 740-689-6991. Swing into the carriage company and check out our sweet deals. If you're looking for the best selection of clean, quality used vehicles, look no further than the carriage company. You'll feel secure with your purchase, knowing all vehicles undergo an extensive safety and service check prior to the sale. And all vehicles can be viewed online at carriagecompany.com. The Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. Sweet! Central Ohio home to thousands of businesses, large and small, each with owners and employees working hard to make their businesses work. We are the savings bank and we're here for your business. When you call, we answer. When you email, we reply. And when you need a business loan, we get moving because in a market of thousands, we keep our eyes on your business. The Savings Bank. Bay Food Market is Fairfield County's source for high-quality, locally-sourced meats. The meat case is always full of quality, fresh beef, pork, gourmet burgers, and gourmet brats for you and your family to enjoy. Bay Food Market cures and smokes their own hams, bacon, and sausage. Visit Bay Food Market at the corner of Maple and Walnut Streets in Lancaster and discover the Bay Food Market difference. Open daily, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., closed Thursday and Sunday. Bay Food Market, proudly serving Fairfield County families for more than 90 years. Dagger Law has more than 110 years of experience in nearly every aspect of the law. When we're not just helping clients, we're helping the community. You'll see us at festivals, sporting events, and around town because we live and work here too. We are your neighbors and we want to help you when you need it. When we help each other, we're stronger. Our community is stronger. Creating a strong, vibrant, healthy, and safe community is everyone's responsibility. And we take the responsibility seriously. We are local. We are trusted. We are experienced. This holiday season, we at Fairfield DD want to say thank you to our community. Your continued support enables us to move toward a community that realizes the value of every person. Fairfield DD is here to bring about a vibrant community where people lead lives of greater independence and make meaningful contributions. As we celebrate the holidays and prepare for a brand new year, we are grateful to our community members for supporting and moving our mission forward every day. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you and those you love. Fairfield Union just about set for the second half. Fairfield Union uh, pep band in the crowd going here as we get ready for the second half. And Tim, let's talk about uh, how Coach Schaefer can get more guys involved in the scoring. Well, I, uh, I'm not sure you can hear me yet.
All right, let's try that again, Tim. <laughs> what can uh, Coach Schaefer do uh, to try to get guys, you know, a little more scoring from his team? Well, you know, Caleb Redding here's got to handle the ball, Jared, and he's their second leading scorer, and yeah. he's a really good three-point shooter and a good scorer, but they're, they're taking his effectiveness away. There's another foul. Quick one on the Scotties. That'll be called on Brady Kaufman. That is his third early here in this third quarter. Official lost his whistle, came off of the uh, lanyard. I've heard people say they should do that once in a while. <laughs> you would never say that, would you? <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> and Tim, you, t you uh, know the man who's helping him out uh, there with his whistle. Who is that? Yeah, Dave, he's, he's the trainer for uh, Tri-Valley, and he's the best. Um, you know, it's interesting. You know, Todd McLaughlin, you said, took over 16 years yep. ago. And, and you already mentioned to me that the trainer, as well as the scorekeeper, are guys who were the trainer and scorekeeper when you were there more than 16 years ago. This is why you have good programs when you have people that are committed to your program, Jared. Yeah. Dave, Dave Peden and Mark Prince are over at the score. I mean, they're just fabulous people. Redding on the baseline for the Falcons. Good, strong move inside, letting them play. A lot of contact in there, no call. But, but see, that's not how Caleb scores best. And a nice shot put up and in by Devin Crane. A great job by Devin sprinting the floor. 24-12 is the score. In the corner, here's Icorn. Icorn, little running jumper, no good. Rebound and put back for Keegan Arnett. That's what they need, just a few easy baskets, see the ball go through the hoop, maybe feel more comfortable offensively. Here's Max Lyle for the Scotties. Lyle takes a screen from Eric Neal. Nice quick ball moving around to Darden down inside. Get it back to Neal. His shot no good, but he's fouled. Yeah, really good ball movement right there, Jared. Swung it around the three-point line, no dribble involved, fed the post, and Eric gets fouled inside. Caleb Redding called for the foul. That's his first. Yeah, we just saw sprint to the floor and get a layup off a missed, you know, missed shot rebound. And that's, you just have to run harder yeah. back. And, and one of the things that, you know, Travis and I both got to talk about this week is what you call defensive balance. Your, your, your guards have to stay back. They're probably not going to get a lot of offensive rebounds. So in this case, if you're having trouble getting back defensively, you have to have defensive balance and put your guards back there and like safeties. Nobody gets past you. 626 and counting here in the third quarter. 26-14. Scotty's on top by 12. Here's Stansberry to Arnett. Now to Redding. Dump inside. Stansberry was wide open. But a quick recovery by the Scotties forced Stansberry to kind of do a little reverse layup. Back the other way. Darden shot no good. Rebounded by the Falcons. Stansberry with the basketball, dumps it into the paint. Arnett off the glass and in. Well, he's the third scorer, and you know he he can pick it up. He 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 can pick it up a little bit. It's going to be around the basket most of it, but that helps. Dump inside. Little turnaround jumper up and in for Devin Crane. Crane with four points in the game, all four in this third quarter. Yeah, nice little cut there by Devin. Turn the little jump hook. Cutter got beat defensively though. That's what you, from the defensive side, Jared, you, you just don't want people, what we used to call cut your face. Don't go in front of you. Make them go behind. Yeah. Redding will bring it up for the Falcons. Get it to Icorn. Icorn on the drive, his shot's blocked into the hands of Brady Kaufman. Here come the Scotties quickly the other way. Layup up and in for Max Lyle. Yeah, that, that, and that, and that's really what you, you can't allow. When you're having enough trouble scoring, you cannot give up easy transition baskets. Here's Redding strong to the hoop. His shot no good. Rebounded by Eric Neal. Here come the Scotties, three on two. Back out now to Devin Crane, the three no good. Backside rebound for Icorn. 
I don't think that's the one Coach McLaughlin was looking for. And Darden just takes it right away from Schmelzer, and he tries to jam it home, but he couldn't get it to go, and it goes out of bounds back to Fairfield Union. Substitutions coming in both sides. Isaiah DeLong comes in for the Falcons. Daniel Huffman comes in for the Scotties. Here's Schmelzer, and a whistle on a foul going to be called on Terrell Darden. That'll be his first. Thirty to sixteen, Scotties lead it as Max Lyle comes back in for Tri Valley. Max is a six foot three junior quarterback of the football team. Yeah, he, he's getting some looks, Jared. Left handed, can really throw it. Here's a steal by the Scotties, and then taken right back by Cohen Icorn, and we're just tipping it back and forth here. Schmelzer. Good ball fake, yeah. and he's fouled. He's, he's super effort right there. Pound the offensive glass, shot fake. Foul was called on Keaton Hahn. That's his second. That sends Caleb Schmelzer to the free throw line. Here's the Dagger Law replay. Uh, Schmelzer makes the free throw. Yeah, watch right here. A little power dribble, crab dribble. Space yourself out and explode up. Almost got a three-point play out of it. Kind of have the feeling that this is one of those games where, you know, Schmelzer is going to have to take over, take control for the Falcons. It's harder, though, if you're not a guard. Yeah. Because you're reliant on other people. Right. That's the thing I will say. But you have to teach the other people also sure. who should take it over, yeah. and that is Caleb. Hits both free throws. Pulls him back to within 12, and now it's told, uh, thrown away into the hands of Isaiah DeLong. Nice pass over to Schmelzer. Puts it up and in, and he's fouled. Yeah, we'll have a timeout here. It's not a not what you want to see from the uh, Tri-Valley sideline. Daniel Huffman called for the foul. That is his third. And we have a timeout on the floor. Timeout tonight brought to you by the Carriage Company. Located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. You can check out their website at carriagecompany.com. And a big thank you to Buffalo Wild Wings. Thanks to Larry Tipton and the crew for great food, great service, and the best sports viewing in town. It's all at Buffalo Wild Wings in the Plaza Shopping Center on North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. Falcons starting to pick up the scoring a little bit uh, in this in this third quarter. Well, you know what? You get a turnover. You keep playing hard. You got an offensive rebound. Those are effort areas that create for yeah. you. And when you're struggling within your sets or your half-court offense, that's how you can get some points, Joe. Just put forth great effort. 30 to 20 right now. Scotty's lead it. Caleb Schmelzer at the free throw line to try to complete the three-point play. Off the front of the iron, no good. Darden with the rebound. Hey, he's just not had his free throw range tonight yet. Hahn back out to Neal. Now Crane. Good ball movement by the Scotties and patience. Lyle, double team, skip pass over. Now they'll get it down to Darden. Back out to Neal. In the corner, Max Lyle for three, got it. Yeah, Eric Neal, that's a great pitch, and you got a 39% a three-point shooter ready to shoot the ball. Max Lyle leading his team with 10 points now after that three. Puts him back up by 13. Schmelzer goes on the drive inside the paint. Had to change his shot, and the foul going to be called. Called on Terrell Darden. That's his second. Here's a look at Coach McLaughlin. Yeah, Coach Garber, Coach Candy right there. Schmelzer misses the first of two free throws. Well, here's the thing. They're already going to shoot two free throws the rest of this period with three minutes to go. you got to keep attacking. 
my numbers are correct, he is now four of nine from the free throw line tonight. Hey, you just got to forget it. It, it. It's one of those things where we say have to have a short memory. Now here's a little 2-1-2 two, two pressure. Seeing if they can get some, some things stirred themselves because they're going to have to create some loose balls, Jared. Here's a trap. Right side with the basketball. Crane gets it back to Darden. Clock rolling down to 2.50 to play in the third quarter. Scotty's lead at 33 to 20. Shot put up, no good. And trying to save it in was Max Lyle, but he's out of bounds. Yeah, they've had a, 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 a three in transition. It wasn't the greatest selection. Um, and, and just not quite as rhythmic as they were earlier. You know, we had a great feed from Eric Neal to, to, to Lyle. But overall, Fairfield Union is doing a really good job defensively. DeLong gets it to Schmelzer, swing it left side to Rowley. Here's Stansberry for three, in. That's big. Pulls him back to within 10, 33-23. Yeah, that's big. Just jump up and shoot the ball. Lyle swings it left side to Hahn. Back out front to Neal. Now here's Darden. He's going to drive and foul going to be called on Hunter Clark away from the basketball. Caleb Redding checked out, and actually they took him back to the locker room. Hopefully he's all right. Here's Schmelzer with the big block and takeaway. Yeah, he was having a little limp earlier when he left the floor. 33-23, Falcons trying to chip away here. Hunter Clark inside the paint, his shot up no good. Rebounded by Cordell Runkle. Here's Runkle. Get it back, or check that, it was Trey Goins Chandler. Wow, great effort. Here is Chandler. Right side now, Neal. Neal goes on the drive. Strong move to the hoop, but he couldn't finish it. And it's rebounded by Stansberry. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a great shot and a great drive out of your offense. Rally in the corner to DeLong, dump inside. And it goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Falcons with 104 to play in the third quarter. What'd they get down, 14? Yeah. So you fought back here a little bit. Use a little energy. You got to finish this quarter well, though, for Fairfield Union to feel good here right. about this quarter. Cohen Eichhorn checks back in for Fairfield Union. Yeah. Get it into Smelter. Caleb. Strong, off the glass, no good. Fights for his own rebound, puts it up and in, and he's fouled. Just stays active, Jared. He stays active. And, and with all the talk about, you know, his skills and his moves, his effort yep. right now tonight has been the biggest thing that stands out. That cuts it to an eight-point lead for the Scotties. Schmelzer with a chance to cut it to seven. There's Redding back on the bench for the Falcons. As Eric Neal checks back in for the Scotties, also coming in, Brady Kaufman. Coach Schaefer over on the uh, toward the bench checking with Redding now. He's the second leading scorer for the Falcons, yet to score tonight. But I'm sure, Coach Schaefer <laughs> love to have him out there. The Schmelzer's troubles at the free throw line continue tonight. Maybe you ought to mention he's having trouble, he'll make them. <laughs> yeah. know we seem to do the other. That's true. <laughs> Eight point deficit for the Falcons. Skies with the basketball, down under a minute to play in the third. Here's Darden. Now to Kaufman. Back out to Lyle. Kaufman will dump it to Neal. Neal. Turnaround jumper from the block is in. Yeah, good job of backing Clarky down in there. Eric's got a lot of experience here. He's played a lot of basketball at the varsity level. That's nine points in the game for Eric Neal. Yeah, he's just been solid. Down to nine seconds. Here's Stansberry. Stansberry back to Schmelzer. 
with three seconds in the corner. Rally for three, no good. Backside rebound for Icorn, and they can't get another shot away, and the Falcons trail it by 10 as we head into the fourth. And you see a dagger law replay of Eric Neal. Yeah, watch here. Watch him reverse pivot. Get it up off the glass. Use his size and strength. Good to play by Eric. Yep. As a reminder, you can find live and past games on our YouTube channel. Just search for CLN, your hometown connection, on YouTube to find games and other local programming. While you're there, make sure to click subscribe so you won't miss any action. And also, if you're on Facebook and X, once known as Twitter, check us out on those social media platforms. Just search for Interphase Video Productions. Much better quarter for the Falcons. They yes. scored 13 in that third quarter. Well, I just thought they were more aggressive, Jared. Honestly, I, I, I thought their effort was great. Still having trouble getting the ball to go in the hole a little bit, but that's all you can do is control your effort and your attitude. Yeah. Tim, our next game uh, will be uh, back here at Fairfield Union Country, right? Yeah, I think so. On uh, January 13th, Bloom Carroll girls will be out here take on the Fairfield Union girls teams. That's always a fun battle between two Mid-State League Buckeye teams. Always has been, always will be, I'm sure. At last check, uh, Bloom Carroll's girls in a tight one at Ken uh, with Canal Winchester tonight. So we head into the final eight minutes of regulation here at Fairfield Union with the Falcons trailing Tri Valley 35 to 25. These two teams played twice last year as Hunter Clark just jumps right in the passing lane and steals it away. Schmelzer, jumper on the baseline, good. 16 points in the game for Caleb Schmelzer. Cuts it back to within eight, 35-27. Kaufman to the block and it has it taken away by Max Stansberry. And now it's taken right back away. And then Stansberry recovers again. Redding back into the game for Fairfield Union. Nice pass over to Hunter Clark. He couldn't get it to go. Kick it back out. Schmelzer, he'll drive inside the paint. Had to change his shot. <laughs> and it's loose on the floor. Schmelzer with the rebound. Goes right back <laughs> up with it. It's blocked out of bounds. I tell you, I love the effort, man. <laughs> that's, that's how you play. Sub coming in for Tri-Valley, that's Daniel Huffman. It's Falcon basketball underneath their own hoop. Cohen Icorn to inbound it. Lobs it in to Schmelzer <laughs> in the corner. Really just nothing else he could do. Schmelzer with Darden all over him, scores it. Hey, stay down. Caleb's so good with the up and under, except Caleb just showing the player he is. It is now a six-point Tri-Valley lead. Fairfield Union continues to chip away, and now a double-team trap and forces Coach McLaughlin to call timeout. Hey, good job by Fairfield Union getting in there 2-2-1. Two, two, watch, watch Caleb here. And good defense by Terrell. Caleb just jumped and went over him. Yep. Yeah, Caleb Schmelzer starting to take over this basketball game. He had eight points at halftime. He currently has 18 in the game to lead all scorers. However, for the Falcons, just three guys total scoring. Well, we've we've talked all night about how they're having a little trouble getting people to get in the mat, and they've had some good shots. Yeah. I thought the first half, I mean, there were probably half a dozen point blank shots, at, but at the varsity level, they're considered layup type easy right, shots, right. but they're contested and you have to learn how to make those. Scott Hayes with the basketball out of the timeout. They were forced to call it as they had a trap right about mid court. Here's Dartum with the basketball. They get it right side to Devin Crane. Crane drives, dishes back out to Neal. He'll fire up the three and got it. Eric Neal's had a night now, hasn't he? That's 12 points in the game for Eric Neal. Yeah, that, that's big. And he leads Tri-Valley in scoring tonight. He only averages 7.1 a game and already with 12 here tonight. Now he's created some shots for people and he's made some shots. Schmelzer. 
Shot no good, rebound the backside by Max Lyle. And ball tipped and stolen away by the Falcons, but taken right back by Terrell Darden. Darden, little scoop shot, no good. Nice backside rebound and put back for Keaton Hahn. Yeah, that's the tempo they want, though, Jared. Even if it's a little, you might call sloppy, but they want it up and down a little more. And just like that, it's back to an 11-point yeah. lead for Tri-Valley. It was just six moments ago. And now a steal, but Terrell Darden was out of bounds. And it goes back to the Falcons. Well, the players are starting to figure out, too, that Caleb Schmelzer is the guy here. I mean, you hope at some point your players do figure that out, but not always happening. Keegan Arnett checks back in for the Falcons. 5.25 to play in the fourth quarter. Tri-Valley up 40 to 29. Schmelzer gets it off to Redding. And tried to get it to Arnett, but it's tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with the Falcons. Isaiah DeLong coming back in for Fairfield Union, replacing Icorn. Left side at Stansbury. Now Arnett. Rolls down to 5.02 to play in the fourth. Stansberry picks up his dribble, and Coach Schaefer going to call a timeout. It is a full length timeout with the Falcons trailing at 40 to 29 with 4.57 to play in regulation. So checking it out again, we, we mentioned in, in the pregame that one of the things that Coach Schaefer really is trying, is looking for out of this team is more guys to get involved with the scoring. Right now, Keegan Arnett has six, Max Stansberry five. Other than that, it's it's all Schmelzer. He's got 18. Well, it's, it's heard that, you know, you have um, Caleb Redding yeah. having to handle the ball so much it takes him off of the ball, where he's really good off the ball. Jay. Right. He shot the ball well last year, and I know this is not last year because things change and rules change and players change. But they got to find out, find some way to have him give the ball up and then work to get it back to him to help their offense. And he is averaging 9.9 .9 points yeah. a game this year. Just really hasn't hasn't even had any open looks tonight. Well, when you're handling the ball, it also fatigues you. Sure. People don't understand. <laughs> He's facing somebody guarding him nose to nose at least from half court. Yeah. Him. And it, 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 they've taken him out. So it'll be Falcon basketball. They will inbound it underneath their own hoop. It will be Redding to inbound. Lobs it in to Schmelzer. Gets it right back to Redding. Here's DeLong. Back to Redding with 4.45 to play in the fourth quarter. See right there. And his shot's blocked out of bounds. No, they're going to say he's fouled. Right there, though, he got the ball to Caleb Smarts at the elbow, and he made a cut. So now he's back involved in the offense, and that is critical for Fairfield Union's success down the road. They called the foul on Terrell Darden. That's his third since Caleb Redding, the free throw line to shoot two shots. First one's up and good. Second free throw for Redding. Off the back of the iron, rebounded by the Scotties. Lots of missed free throws again tonight for the Falcons. You leave points on the floor, that, that's what's hard about it. Here's Lyle. They're just running a five out cutter here. They, their spacing's not real good at the moment. It's gotta get better. There you go. Cutters, let him play one on one. No, he backs it out. Darden going to back way out now and swing it left side to Max Lyle. Lyle worked on by Arnett. Neal hands it off to Darden. Gets it back inside. Neal kick it back out. Keaton Hahn's three is no good. Backside rebound by Eric Neal. Good hustle. Or no, check that. It was Devin Crane with the hustle rebound. 
Darden inside the paint, shot up and in. Uh, he went with more force there, Jared. You could feel the pound of the dribble, and then he jump stopped and put his body in that. That was the most assertive drive he's made. First score of the second half for Terrell Darden, and now they steal it away. <laughs> Darden <laughs> puts it up and in. Yeah, just a layup this time, please. <laughs> <laughs> Another 14-point lead for hey. Tri-Valley. Just Ooh. moments ago, it was down to six. Live ball turnovers are just, they're misery. You can't defend them. Redding has it tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with Fairfield Union as you see the Dagger Law replay. Yeah, watch him here. Watch the jump stop, two feet, and strong to the hoop, Jared. It's the most assertive drive that he's had all game. Yeah. He's currently up to 11 points in the game is Terrell Darden. The average is 12.1. Here's Schmelzer. His shot's blocked. You don't see that very often, but he gets his own rebound and puts it up no good. Rebounded by the Scotties. Here they come, three on one. Lyle, back to Darden, back to Lyle. He puts it up and in. Max Lyle now with 12 in the game. Back the other way, Schmelzer. They are really frustrating Caleb underneath the bucket tonight. But he just keeps working. Yep. I give him credit. He's attacking the basket. Goes after his own rebounds. He's putting forth the effort necessary. But Tri-Valley is just really hurting them in transition, D. Uh, the, the, probably the hardest part of defense in basketball, Jared, is transition and, and, and getting back and, and responding and keeping defense in balance. We've talked about it tonight, but you've seen the effect here in the last two minutes. They've taken a six-point lead up yeah. to 14 points. Schmelzer this time hits both free throws. And a sub coming in for the Falcons. That is Cole Rowley. Also coming in is Hunter Clark. <laughs> Caleb a blow here. 2.37 to play in the fourth quarter, 46-32. Tri-Valley leads Fairfield Union. Here's Darden. Wow. That was almost taken away, and now it is going to be taken away. Hunter Clark gets on the floor, and Coach Schaefer smartly calls the timeout before he gets tied up. That's, that's a 30-foot bounce pass. <laughs> that's a long way, Jerry. you got to understand when you throw bounce passes, they slow down due to the friction yeah. on the floor. If Max, you, Max yeah. Lyle limping a little bit for well, Drive Alley. I, I give the FU kids credit there, man. They dove for the ball, yes, they and they got a turnover. I mean, watch this. Watch here. how far that is. That's a long way, Jared. And, and right there is where Max Lyle turned that ankle a little bit. Wow. You know, you see more and more guys. Max Lyle's one of them that, that wear low cut tennis shoes playing basketball. You, you never used to see that at all. They would all, all wear high tops, try to protect the ankles a little more, but it seems like a lot of them nowadays uh, feel more comfortable in the low cuts. There was a time when I had them all wear braces. Yeah. Because we did not want a severe ankle turn. We right. just made them. But it's a different day and age, Jared. Yes, it is. 46-32, <laughs> Tri-Valley leads the Falcons. Falcons throw it away. Max Lyle steals it. Here he comes. Bounce pass over. Max Stansberry yeah. gets a hand on it and tips it away. Yes, yeah, sprint back. Lyle lobs it in to Darden. Terrell gets it left side to Kaufman, out down to the corner to Neal. Skip it all the way over to Darden. Just a lot of patience here as we tick down under two minutes to play in the ball game. Well, I mean, Fairfield Union does not have a five. That's true, <laughs> yeah. I mean, not a single one. I know. So they're just going to make them run the clock at this point. Minute 36 and counting. Right side, here's Neal. Hey, when you're on the road, you'll take this any time. Yep. <laughs> you let me get on the bus. <laughs> wow. You got to zip the ball if you're going to do this. It'll be crisp and hard. Here's Darden. 
Puts a shot up at in, and he's fouled. Yeah, that's just like rubbing salt in the wound right there, Jerry. Yeah. You run a minute and some off, and you get a three-point play possibility. Foul was called on Keegan Arnett. And since Terrell darted into the free throw line, has 13 points in the ball game, make it 14. And the Scotties now lead it 49 32, 107 to play in the game. Here's Stansberry. Right side now to Rowley. Rowley going to go on the drive and have it stolen away. Here's Neal. Neal going to lay it up and in for the Scotties. Fifty-one, thirty-two, a nineteen-point lead. All of a sudden, for Tri Valley, Schmelzer going to fire up a long-range three. No good. Keegan Arnett, the hustle rebound, and he's fouled. Good effort by Keegan, going from A to B on the boards here with thirty seconds to go. Well, we have a stoppage as uh, Falcons. Start to inbound the basketball. We'll get to our players of the game. As you see Stansberry here laying up. A reverse layup puts it up, giving him seven points in the game. Let's do our Tri-Valley player of the game. Brought to you by Bay Food Market. Stop in at Bay's and check out their weekly gourmet burger and brat selection and their weekend steak sale specials. Bay Food Market at the corner of Walnut and Maple Streets in Lancaster. Jared, I think Eric Neal's the player of the game for the Scotties tonight. He hit some shots, big shots. I thought he delivered the ball uh, to shooters. He played defense. He got a lot of deflections. I, I thought Eric had a heck of a game tonight. So number 11, Eric Neal, our Tri-Valley player of the game, brought to you by Bay Food Market. Let's get to the Fairfield Union player of the game, brought to you by the Savings Bank, where community always comes first. The Savings Bank, proud of our heritage, founded by local people, committed to serving individuals and businesses in southeastern Ohio. Learn more at thesavingsbank.com. Caleb Schmelter. Yep. His effort tonight, along with his talent, he's just, he's tremendous. He was helping his younger players with leadership tonight. He, he's growing in that way. I've seen him play enough, and uh, I really love what effort he put forth tonight. And you know what? They just have to go back to work tomorrow and keep continuing to get better. You know, Coach Schaefer talked about they early in the year they had this this super trust in each other and in sports especially team sports you got to trust in your teammates that you're going to get better and then you got to help each other do it let's check scoring first of all for the visiting tri-valley scotties who win it tonight 51 to 34 they had five guys in the scoring column and they had three in double figures which has been their their yes. average for the year it was uh keaton hahn with four points for the scotties it uh, go check that. Keaton Hahn had seven. Devin Crane with four. And then the three guys in double figures. Max Lyle had 12. Terrell Darden had 14. That's two over his average. And Eric Neal with a really good night tonight. He doubled up his uh, season average. He scored 14 tonight. And he is our player of the game for Tri-Valley. For the Fairfield Union Falcons, it was Keegan Arnett with six. Caleb Redding had one. Max Stansberry with seven. And Caleb Schmelzer led all scorers with 20 points. But again, once again, the couple things that, that really hurt Fairfield Union, the lack of of offense around Schmelzer and also just free throws continuing yeah, to hurt them. Simple things, make make the simple shots, make free throws. Those things you can get better and will get better at if you do the right, you know, have the right approach. Spend some time with it, but you know, there's not a lot of things that are complicated here, Jared. They're simple. Field Union in uh, just a little over a week for girls basketball. Yeah, looking forward to it. Coach Montgomery and his Falcons take on the uh, uh, Bulldogs from Bloom Carroll, and it, it's always an interesting battle. Once again, your final score tonight, Tri-Valley on the road tonight wins at Fairfield Union 51-34. to For our entire Interphase Video Productions crew and Tim Shoemaker, I'm Jared Stewart. Have yourselves a great night, everybody. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by 
Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H, The Savings Bank, Fairfield Medical Center, The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, The Carriage Company, Fairfield DD, Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, Dagger Law, and North Body Shop. <laughs>